This question deals with testing people to see if they have a particular virus. No test is perfect. In this case, the test detects that the virus is in a person 90% of the time if the person actually has the virus. However, if the person doesn't have a virus, it still detects the person does have the virus 10% of the time. So how do we go about solving this? I like to do this with a table. On the left hand side, I'm going to indicate the first row are people that have the virus and the second row is people who do not have the virus. The columns, the first one is the test is positive and the second column is the test is negative. So from the problem information, I know that if a person has the virus, 90% of the time the test will say that that person does in fact have the virus. If the person doesn't have a virus, 10% of the time the test is still going to say the person has the virus. Since probabilities have to add to 1, since the test is going to say 90% of the time that the person with the virus has a virus, 10% of the time the test will say they do not. Likewise, 90% of the time the test will say a person does not have the virus because 10% of the time the test will say a person without the virus is actually positive. So that takes care of the 90% and the 10%. Now we have the fact that we've got 950 people we're talking about. One person has a virus out of every 950 people, which means 949 people do not have the virus for every single person that does. So if one person has the virus, that means 0.9 or 90% of 1 will have a positive test result, and that equals 0.9. We're going to ignore the fact that we can't have 0.9 of a person. Again, if we have 10% of the time that person with the virus is going to show negative, we multiply 0.1 by 1 and get 0.1. And just to double check, 0.9 plus 0.1 does in fact equal 1. Now let's do the same thing for the second row. If I have 949 people and 10% of them are going to show that they do have the disease when they actually do not, 949 times 0.1 is simply 94.9 people. And likewise, 90% of them will show that they don't in fact have the disease. And just to take a step back for a moment, this number represents the people who have false negatives. That is, they're told they do not have the virus when they actually do. And this box is the false positive. That is, the number of people who are going to be told they have the virus when they don't actually have the virus. You might think that that's not that bad to be told that you have a disease when you don't. You could run a test again a second time and end up with the correct result. However, Say we were doing, I don't know, drug testing for employment. In that case, a false positive really is a big deal. You have not been using drugs, and yet you still are tested as if you have been taking drugs. So false positives are a big deal. So let's look at our actual questions. The first question says, find the probability that a person has a virus given that they've tested positive. First, I need to find the totals for each column. The number of people that the test says has the virus is 0.9 plus 94.9 or 95.8. For my second column, that is the number of people who have tested negative for the disease, that's 854.2. What's the probability a person has a virus given that they've tested positive? Well, the number of ways for that to happen for both them to being positive and having the virus is 0.9 divided by all the ways that I could end up testing positive, and that's 95.8. And that's a pretty small percentage. That is, less than 1% of the people are actually going to have the virus given that they've tested positive for the virus. And this is due to that large false positive percent. 10% doesn't seem like much, but when you have a very rare virus, in this case one out of 950 people 
you actually have a very low percentage of the people who actually have the virus, even though they've tested positive. The second problem asks for the probability that the person doesn't have the virus, given that they've tested negative. Well, that's represented by the number 854.1. Those are the number of people who are tested negative and do not have the virus. We need to divide that by the total number of people who are tested negative, which is 854.2. So this shows that it's pretty good at correctly identifying people that don't have the virus when it's tested negative. So this is actually a pretty good percentage. It's almost 100% when we rounded it to the nearest whole percent. So that's saying if you test negative, the probability you do not actually have the virus is in fact pretty high. But what's concerning is if you're tested positive, the probability that you actually have the virus is not that high at all.